Christmas to everyone. It's so good to see you here this morning. God bless you. You're in for a, a real treat here this morning. But I want you to know this. Our goal is to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about. So if you're visiting with us, if you're our guest today, we want you to know what our intention is. Now certainly we want you to enjoy yourself. We want you to feel and sense a warm welcome. But at the same time, we are here to uplift, honor, and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here this morning. Just to, let me tell you a, a brief story. My wife and I, we went to a family funeral. Oh, I don't know, it might have been five years ago now. It's been a while. And while we were in the funeral, my brother-in-law gave my wife his cell phone. She put it in her purse. Well, at the most disadvantageous time in the middle of the funeral, guess what happened? My brother-in-law got a phone call. Of course, my wife had the cell phone in her purse. And so here we are looking around and everybody is looking at us because the cell phone is going off in the middle of a funeral. Um, the moral of the story is simple, is it not? I don't need to say any more. If you're here and you need to use a rest area, we have a couple out on the throughway, but then we actually have some closer right at each end of the lobby. Uh, on, the, on this end, you just turn right. On that end, you turn left. But we want you to enjoy yourself and have a wonderful, wonderful time. Merry Christmas from all of us at First Bible Baptist Church. Light is come. Light is come. Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. Christmas carols? Yes. All right, let's do it. Why are the sheep we watch at night? The tidings of God. Thank 
beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was? God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him? There was not anything made that was made. And Him? Was light. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness. Comprehended it. Not. Do you ever stop to consider just how much of our lives are controlled by the presence or absence of light? What is light? You ever wondered what it is exactly? I'm not a scientist, but I wonder if the best way to understand what light is is by understanding what light does. Light enables sight. Light destroys darkness. Light reveals what was, prior to its presence, hidden. Or how about this? Without light... You just can't see anything? And that can be a problem. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them hath the light shined. Oh yes, the light did shine. And Oh
Life is full of interruptions, isn't it? You're just going about your day. You have things that you absolutely have to get done. And then you get interrupted. Whatever you were doing has to stop. And you've got to deal with something new. Sometimes interruptions can be quickly swept aside. And we can go right back to what we were doing. And sometimes we're interrupted and we never ever go back to what we were doing before. Like, what's about to happen to this guy? His name is Zacharias. He's a righteous man who loves God. He also holds the highest office a priest can hold. And once a year, he enters the most holy place in the temple in Jerusalem and renders a sacrifice for the sins of his entire nation. And um, he has no children, which has brought him a lifetime of sadness and shame. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. I felt the baby move today. It, it, it was more like a kick, really. And then I threw up again. Oh. And by the way, there aren't any more pickles. Yes, that's right. I ate all the pickles again. But I am 76 years old, and I'm having a baby. My first. Isn't that something? Because why not? I mean, most of my friends' children are already grandparents themselves. But hey, and apparently our child wants pickles. So I just give him whatever he wants, that way he can be still for just one blessed moment, that way I won't have to throw up again. Because being pregnant, nauseous, and 76 years old? <gasps> oh my. I am gonna be a horrible mother. I am just giving him whatever he wants already. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm too old. Zacharias, what is God doing? Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Saith your God, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That's talking about our son, uh, the prophet 
Isaiah wrote about our son? That's just incredible. Our son is going to be the one that's going to prepare the way for the Messiah? Zacharias, you know what that means? The Messiah is coming. surprises us sometimes, doesn't it? Surprises are funny things. Either you love them or you don't. <laughs> Gotta be honest, I'm not really a fan. I get a little crazy when I know somebody's gotten me a present and they won't tell me what it is. I've literally begged people to let me in on a secret while promising them that I will absolutely act shocked and amazed when the secret is revealed. Is that weird? It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Some surprises, even though they might be good, shake us to our very core and change us in such a way that we are never, ever the same again. 
Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom. To order it. And to establish it. With judgment and justice. From hence even forever. Will perform this. Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. How can this be, seeing I know not a man? The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. You ever have to face making a hard decision? You know, one of those difficult, life-changing decisions where you know whatever way you end up going, your life is never going to be the same once you decide. And probably you put off making the decision because you just didn't know what to do. You couldn't sleep. You couldn't concentrate. You probably became irritable. Did you ever, in your exasperation, look up to heaven Wishing God would just show up and tell you what to do? What's funny about that is that sometimes God does just that. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And then comes decision time. You asked. God answered. But what will you do? I thought you left. Yes, I know. I did. I was... Are you all right? Mary, I know what I said before. What's and wrong? I... You're scaring me. Mary, I believe you. What? I believe you. You do? Yes. An angel appeared to me in a dream. A dream? Yes, a dream. But it was real, wasn't it? I don't know. What did the angel say? He said that you were telling the truth. I was telling the truth, Joseph. So who else knows? What do you mean? Who else knows about... Who else knows about the baby? Yes. My parents, your mother, my cousin Elizabeth, and her husband, I suppose. Mary? Yes? The angel said something else. He did? He said not to be afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid to take you as my wife. Are you? Afraid? Yes. No, I'm not. The angel said that this baby, this baby is from God. And he's going to save our people from their sins.
Hubble believing something that was just utterly fantastic. The kind of stuff that seems like it came out of some movie screenplay, like, um, like toys that come to life and talk to each other, or a, or a fairy tale princess who gets angry and freezes all her friends, or a uh, sardonic man who puts on an iron suit and flies around fighting bad guys from outer space, something like that. How about this for a fantastic story? God leaves heaven, is born a man, is wrapped in rags, is laid in the feeding trough of a cow, in a stable, in the cold, at night, which is all just the first quiet step in an epic journey with one single simple aim to save you. God came to earth to find you, to save you. I mean, come on! Isn't that your favorite part of a movie? When the hero comes in to save the damsel in distress? Here's the question. Is that really what this story is all about? Is that really what this story is all about for you? Is it really about God coming to earth to save you for real? Or is it just a good story told at Christmas time, a screenplay with really cute characters, a heartwarming ending where we all leave feeling warm and mushy, a comfortable piece of theater we trot out at Christmas time. Has our familiarity lulled us to sleep? He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. But as many as received him. To them gave he power. To become the sons of God. Even to those who believe on his name. Which were born. Not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. But of God. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. Star lights up the sky. And white light in the dark shines an everlasting light. For the king has left his throne and is sleeping in a major night. Oh, Bethlehem, when you would miss while you were sleeping, for God became a man and stepped into your world today. Oh, Bethlehem, you will go down in history as a city with no room for its king while you were sleeping. While you were sleeping Mary shivers in the cold Trying to keep the Savior warm Born among the animals Wrapped in dirty rags Because became a man and stepped into your world today. 
like another silent night As we're sung to sleep by philosophies That save the trees and kill the children And while we're lying in the dark There's a shout heard across the eastern sky For the bridegroom has returned and has carried his bride away in the night, in the night. America, what will we miss while we are sleeping? As a nation with a no king for his king, will we be sleeping? Will we be sleeping? The United States of America looks like another silent night. a reality in life that we don't like to speak out loud because of its brutality and truth. But we all at some point in our adult lives instinctively understand that this reality is deeply, personally, and disappointingly true. No one is coming for you. No one. And that's not to say that there aren't people in your life that don't love you. There are. And it's not to say that there haven't been people in your life along the way that have helped you. There have been. But who can come and cure the grief you feel when you lose precious things. Children, parents, siblings, friends. Who among you hasn't lost something precious? Who can come and stop the tears that fall when sacred things get broken? Promises, dreams, plans, hopes, desires. And who among us hasn't wept over broken things? But most of all, who can come and save you from what awaits us all? An impending darkness. When your body is worn out, the strength of your life is spent, all of your accomplishments, your greatest triumphs and failures are all now behind you. And as you struggle to take your final breaths in this life, who can come and give you the thing that people throughout all time have longed for? Freedom. Freedom. Freedom from the sadness that plagues us. Freedom from the sin that spoils us. Freedom from the death that awaits us. Freedom from the guilty verdict delivered when each of us stands before a holy God to be judged. 
freedom from that eternal darkness. Freedom. Who can come and free you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Who hath warned you to flee from wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruit, meat of repentance. For I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. But there cometh one after me who is mightier than I, whose shoes latch yet I am not worthy to bear. The same shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Me next. I have need to be baptized of thee. Comest thou to me? Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness.
the narrator asks some very penetrating questions, very soul-searching questions. Who will come for you? Who will come for you? Who will come for you to free you from your sadness, free you from your fear, free you from your sin, free you from your guilt, free you from darkness, free you from eternal darkness? Who will come to save you? That's an important question. The answer was given the first thing that I said here today. Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. The light has come. The light has come, Jesus Christ. Who will come to save you? I think of that verse in John, and several verses have been quoted from the Gospel of John here this morning. The story, John the Baptist was a great prophet, a great Old Testament prophet in that sense, and he came to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ, the precursor, the one to announce that the Messiah would come. John was such a powerful prophet himself, such an unusual and unique individual, that people came to John and said, are you the prophet? Are you the Messiah? Are you the light? And he responded, he said, no, I'm not that light. And then we, re we read in the Gospel of John that he came to announce that the light would come. And that light, John chapter 1, verse number 9, is Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. Just take that verse apart for a moment. Jesus Christ. I told you a few moments ago that we would come to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God who became a man. He is the Word made flesh and dwelt among us. Great is the, great is the mystery of godliness, the Bible says. God was manifest in the flesh. God came to earth. Jesus Christ is the true light that cometh, that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Jesus Christ is. He is. He's alive. He's risen. He's coming again. He's not dead. He is no longer in that grave. He only spent three days there, and he rose from the dead. Jesus Christ is the, the, there's only one. He is unique. He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the Savior. He is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. No one else in all of history is worthy of any of those titles. Jesus Christ is the. He himself said in the Gospel of John, he said, speaking of himself, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now that's not my opinion. Only, although it is my opinion, that's what the Bible says. Jesus is the way. Neither is there any other name given among men whereby we must be saved. That's what the Bible says, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is. He's alive. The, he is unique. Jesus Christ is the true light, truth. We live in a world today of relativism. It's hard to find difficult to find people that believe anything is absolutely true. Well, Pastor Grace, you know, what's good for you may not be good for me. And what is true for you may not be true for me. That's insanity. That's crazy. The truth is the truth. Jesus Christ is the true light 
the true light. He penetrated the darkness. Who is going to come for you? Who is going to come and free you from your sadness and your fear? Who is going to come and free you from your sin and from your guilt? Who is going to come and free you from impending darkness and ultimately eternal darkness? Who will come and save you? I have an answer. Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. This message is for everybody, every man, everyone. Christ died for our sins on the cross. Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Let me ask you again. Who will come for you? Who will free you from your sadness? Who will free you from your sin and from your guilt? Who will free you from eternal darkness? Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man that come into the the world. Our sword speakers this morning quoted what is probably the most famous verse in all of the Bible. John chapter 3, verse 16, God so loved the world, that's every man. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, God became a man. His only begotten son, that whosoever, every man, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is what the gospel is all about. The word gospel means good news. Let me give you the bad and then the good. The bad is that we're all sinners, that all of us deserve eternal darkness. All of us deserve eternal damnation. That's the bad news. But the good news is that someone has come for us, Jesus Christ. Someone has come for you. His name is Jesus. He came for you. You have a responsibility in this relationship. Your responsibility is to repent and believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe that he has come for you. Believe that he went to the cross, that he was buried, that he rose again from the dead. That's the essence of the gospel. And he did that to free you. If he didn't, who is going to come for you? Who is going to come for you? Salvation is not in religion. Salvation is not in a church organization or denomination. Salvation cannot be accomplished by you alone. Salvation has already been paid for. and Jesus died on the cross and he said, it is finished. Now it's your turn. You have a decision to make. Will you believe him? Will you accept him? Will you receive him? Will you turn from your sin? Repent of your sin. Turn from it and turn to Jesus Christ and ask him, and he will, Ask him to forgive you and save you and give you the gift of eternal life. And he will save you and he will rescue you from your sadness and from your sin and from your fear and from your guilt. And he will rescue you from eternal darkness because the light has come. Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. Have you ever received him as your Savior? Have you received the light? Have you allowed the light of God to penetrate the darkness of your soul and of your sin? That's the question. And right now, if you have never done that, I want you to take the opportunity. If you would, 
everyone in this room, Christian or non-Christian, saved or lost, whatever, how, whatever you consider yourself to be, I'm going to ask all of you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Would you do that? You have heard the gospel now for 45 to 60 minutes. It has been preached, it has been sung, it has been spoken in so many different ways. The message is, someone has come for you to rescue you. His name is Jesus. Where you're seated here this morning, if you have never understood that, you never have seen that, you have never accepted that and made it yours, you can do that this morning by simply praying to God with a sincere heart to Him. As sincere as you possibly can be, you can say, Lord, I'm sorry, I have failed you. I am a sinner. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and that he came to die for me on the cross. And right now I'm putting my faith and my trust and completely in him and him alone. I cannot save myself. I accept the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I went through that pretty quickly. I'm going to go through it a little bit more slowly right now for you. If you can believe that and you can accept that, would you pray with me right now in your heart? You don't have to pray out loud, but you have to pray with understanding and with sincerity. You could pray like this, Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I have failed you. I have disobeyed your word. And Lord, I am truly and sincerely sorry for that. Please, Lord, forgive me. I know that I cannot save myself. I'm a sinner. I can't save myself and I can't save anybody else. But Lord, I believe that you came to save me, to save us. And right now I place my trust, my faith, my belief in Jesus Christ that you, Jesus, came to rescue me and free me. Right now, I ask you to forgive me, to save me, to give me the gift of eternal life. I'm asking you, Lord, to make me a child of God and to take me home to heaven when I die. And I pray this in your precious and holy name. Now, heads remain bowed and eyes closed, if you would. Listen to me carefully. This is for you. This is what I'm asking you to do for you, not for me. I'm asking you if you truly, right now, prayed and asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. The lights are down. No one's looking around. It's just you and God in that seat right now. No one's looking at you. Everyone is maintaining the privacy of the moment. But this is for you. Because the Bible says a person who has accepted Christ as Savior will not be ashamed about that. So right where you are seated this morning, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand for your benefit, not mine. I can't see you, but I'm going to ask you, if you've trusted Jesus this morning, for your benefit to tell you, yourself, that you meant business. I'm asking you to put your hand up in the air and say, I meant business. I meant business, God. Tell God I meant business with what I said. Just hold it in the air. No one's looking. No one's going to come and tap you on the shoulder. No one's going to ask you to set, give a speech or anything. This is for you. Will you be honest with God and say, God, today I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Just slip your hand up in the air. And you can may put it back down. Father, I want to pray for these who have come here this morning. I do not know their names. I do not know where they live. But Lord, I believe that if they've honestly and sincerely accepted the message of the gospel, that today they passed from death unto life, that they became a child of God. And Lord, I pray that you would bless them and give them wisdom beyond their years. Help them to understand that the truth lies within the pages of this precious book that we call the Bible. Lord, help them to understand that faith in Christ is just a beginning of a life of discipleship, of following the master teacher, the Lord Jesus, of living by his example, and taking his words and his truth, 
and sharing them with others. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the people here this morning who have honestly lifted up their voices and their hearts to you in repentance and faith and asked you to forgive them and save them. In Jesus' name I pray. And all the people said, amen, amen. I'm going to ask you to look to me for just a moment. We're going to have one rousing final song, and we are going to ask all of you to join us in one big choir. But before we do that, this is Sunday morning at First Bible Baptist Church, and we will receive our regular offering this morning. So ushers, if you'll make your way forward at this moment, if you're one of our guests this morning, I'm not asking you for a penny. We're not charging you to come here. We, don't ex we expect you to support your church, your charitable cause, whatever it is that rings your bell. And I mean that, truly. But I, obviously the people that attend First Bible, this kind of rings their bell every now and then. So we receive an offering this morning for uh, First Bible Baptist Church. Lord, bless the offering. Thank you for the wonderful time we've had here this morning. We have been reminded of your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, while these offering plates are being passed, there's a uh, a couple things that I really need to say, three things I need to say. The first thing, maybe the most important, is if you prayed this morning, you asked Jesus to save you, you understand right now what Christmas is really all about. He's the gift, the gift of eternal life, salvation and forgiveness. I want to give you a Christmas present. This little booklet is entitled Ultimate Questions. I've given out thousands. I'm probably in the tens of thousands now. This book shares the gospel of Christ. There's over a hundred different scripture references in this book that show us the truth of Jesus Christ and what it means to be a Christian. Why? All, the, all of the major questions, I believe, are answered in this book. As you exit this morning, Ushers will be standing at all of the exits with these. They're not going to throw it in your face, but they will be available. And I'm asking you to feel free to reach out and take one. All that I'd ask you to do would be this. Read it. Would you take it and read it? Friday night we had a crowd, probably mostly visitors or guests on Friday night. These went out of here like hotcakes. And I'm so thrilled. That means people are interested in reading the scriptures, reading about Jesus Christ. Please feel free to take them. We bought one for every one of you. Take one if you're interested, curious, or if you've trusted Christ as your Savior this morning. Secondly, for those of you that have signed up for Read the Bible Through, you've prayed, you've made your commitment. Maybe you even said that on our communication card a couple weeks ago. We preached on the subject last Sunday morning. Many people came forward and said, I'm going to read the Bible through in 2015 with First Bible Baptist Church. Your journal, those of you that want a paper journal, they are available at both welcome centers. Remember this, I'm asking you to sign your name and give us an email address. That way we can follow up and encourage you in your reading. But for those of you that have signed up, You've made your commitment. They are available to you. And a reminder, one per customer. If your wife or your husband wants to do it, you pick up one for you and you say, Honey, Pastor Grace said, get your own. Okay? Do that. Same thing for our young people. If our young people want one, you tell your uh, teenager, you go to, go to the Welcome Center and you sign up for yourself. So they're available for everyone that's made that commitment, but I'm asking you to take only yours and sign for it. And then just a reminder that we will not have a um, Wednesday night service this week. We're not having a Christmas Eve service. People are saying, ah, we have spent hours, thousands of hours preparing what you had the opportunity to sit and participate in this morning. This is my recommendation. Spend the evening with your family. Spend Christmas Eve with your family. That's a good idea. Stay home. Get together. Enjoy your family. 
Put on a new face. Get rid of your grumpy old attitude. Would you do that? Just get around your family. Pull out the wallet. Spend some money. Get some good food. Sit around. Share some good stories with one another. Repent of all your miserableness from the last year, whatever it is. Just have a great time with your family. Enjoy the grandkids. Enjoy your children. And spend Christmas Eve with your family this week. Would you do that now? As our cast comes back right now, we're asking you to join them in one big choir as we close our service here this morning. Come on out here, everybody. Haven't they done a wonderful job today? Give them a big hand. Let's stand together and sing with them this morning. Would you do that? Sing it out. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And
สามข้อคุณทุกคนขอบคุณมากที่ทุกคนมาและขอบคุณมากที่ทุกคนมาและขอบคุณมากที่ทุกคนมาและขอบคุณมากที่ทุกคนมาและขอบคุณมากที่ทุกคน